it looks like the home of a James Bond villain. There's a small arsenal of weapons and a fluffy cat. While the kettle boils in the background, Karen Kennedy is running a whetstone over a European broadsword. So, when it when it gets banged against other swords, when they get um, parried against each other, mm. they get nicks. She's not sharpening so, the edge, the as the medieval owners of weapons like this would have. Rather, she's taking out the nicks and making sure the edge is blunt. That's because Karen is no collector. She has every intention of swinging this at people, and she's teaching a loyal band of Western Sydney fighters to do the same. Welcome to Swordplay. Half martial arts school, half staged combat, this is one of the most unique sporting groups you're likely to find. Students learn to fight and create choreographed sequences like those found in movies, television and theatre. Their fearless leader is Karen Kennedy, with black belts in two Asian martial arts and 16 years of experience with weapons. She's not to be taken lightly. So it's 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 actually it's an actual practical weapon without the edge. You could really hurt someone with that. Absolutely. If you don't parry it well or you strike incorrectly, I've seen people opened up. I have a love for the sword. For me, um, it goes back to sort of old traditions of, of just hearing things from my grandparents and things like that. Um, the sword always stood for justice and truth and, you know, helping the oppressed and all that sort of thing. So I have that love for that weaponry and I think I've studied the weaponry for that reason. Of course, I'm an assassin by heart. The group meet in the hall of Roos Public School each week to practice their routines. There's a huge range of people here, young and old, seasoned warriors and complete beginners. Refreshingly, for a combat sport, there are also plenty of women. It's not as heavy as a historical broadsword. This is a bit lighter for stage combat, so we can keep repeating over and over again. Karen's daughter Kathleen has followed in her mother's footsteps. She does stunt work for productions and now helps Karen teach. We never had a problem. Sometimes I've seen smaller classes where the girls have outnumbered the guys. And they're usually the feistiest too. Karen says long travel times to the city can cut Western Sydney residents off from interest in cultural activities. When I set this up out this way, it was with, for the specific reason of building something out here that would be a passionate, fun thing to do for all the people that lived this way. You know, it, the inner city has got heaps of stuff. Melissa Anderson is one of the group's younger members. She joined when she was just 14. Now, five years later, she's risen up the ranks to become one of the trainers. She says sword combat has given her skills for the real world. It's given me a lot of confidence and a lot of leadership skills, especially when um, Karen will give me um, a job. She will ask me to train somebody who's sometimes twice my age. Do you yeah. put this on your resume? I do, because they go, wow, she's, she's disciplined, she's, she's committed to something. Karen is thrilled to see young people like Melissa getting involved. She says computer games and the internet are robbing kids of the physical activity she enjoyed growing up. I think um, violence has been um, overrated in this day and age in the sense of... Um, I grew up playing on roundabouts in the park before the councils took it all away. We got splinters when we were kids growing up. I had grazed knees, I had, you know, I climbed trees, I did all this stuff. Today, kids are not allowed to do that. It isn't trying. The public's fascination with swords and duelling doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. With major film and TV franchises like Game of Thrones and Pirates of the Caribbean leading the way, Swordplay is cutting a path to becoming a major cultural institution. This is James Elton Pym for Due West.